how are you guys? Um, you guys are live here with Brush by Brandy. We're live on my own page because I don't think I go live on here enough. I go live on the Dixie Bell page every week and then I my own page kind of ne gets neglected. So I don't know, maybe nobody will even pop on here with me. But if you are here, um, come on and tell me hi. Let me know you're watching. I see two people, two people. One's probably Sean. Um, we are live here on my own page tonight because I'm working on a piece and I thought I might as well just go live. I was just making some videos um, for the Redesign with Prima YouTube channel and I'm still painting so I might as well paint with you guys, right? Otherwise I'm just painting alone. Nobody wants to paint alone. Um, I constantly get asked for videos for um, a, a ton of stuff. And I try to cover as much as I can on my weekly Dixie Bell lives, but um, but I don't know, this is some extras. So I'm gonna show you guys what I'm working on right now. This is the piece I did live on my Dixie Bell channel, or my Dixie Bell live last week. It's funky, right? I Hi, Patty, thank you. Thank you, somebody's on, thank you. Hi guys, you and Todd, nice to see you, Don. Um, so this is the page, or the piece that I'm working on right now. And it's it's pretty funky, right? We started this last week but since then I've done a whole bunch more steps and I feel like oh yeah you're right there is 48 people yikes no pressure right um I've done a lot more steps and so I, I never really show you guys the things that go on after the paint to finish it off it's never just the paint it's never just the paint um people see you know blended looks and um, all these funky designs and it's usually a layering of products. So I've got my paint on. I've even got a coat of clear on it, but I wanted to talk to you guys about the, um, I don't know, the next steps that I would do in this piece. So in my live this week, I painted this piece and it's got Dixie Belle Peacock, Plum Crazy, um, Amethyst, and Aubergine. Two shades of purple in there. I am right now adding a little bit of kernel mustard. And I'm also gonna put these guys on. So I cast these guys in resin. These are little butterflies that I made with the Regal Fine Needs mold from Redesign. And I cut out. I don't know what I did with it. Anyways, I cast these, that's the backside, little butterflies. And these are um, in kernel mustard. And I'm gonna place these kind of around. So you see I'm adding the little bit of kernel mustard here. And then picture like this guy here. Maybe he has a friend. I wanna make sure they're different though. Like this. Maybe a couple of them on a drawer. I just dropped that in my paint. I just dropped this in my paint. I'll show you guys. This is what I this is why it's hard for me to paint live. You see that? That was Colonel Mustard. So this guy is out of the running. He will not be used for anything now. I could probably rinse that off. I'll take him over to my sink and rinse it off. But I think I still have enough. So I'm going to take my Tight Bond Quick and Thick. Hi, guys. And I'm going to glue on some of these little butterflies. So they're already pre-painted because I want them a different color than the body on my piece. And I'm just going to put on a little bit of Quick and Thick on the back. Not enough that it squishes out from the sides when I press it on. And then I'm going to tape him because he's going to slide a little bit. It's not big enough to really stay in place. So I'm going to put a little bit of painter's tape on here. Now, I already have clear coat on this. And what I usually do is I will clear coat my piece. Once I have a paint finish that I like, I will put a clear coat over it. And that preserves the paint finish. So anything I do over top... Um, is not going to touch my paint finish. And then if I don't like it, I can wipe it off. But I know that that paint finish is always sealed and always protected. So I'm gonna come over here and put it on this side. See, I've got a total of one. I got a total of six I can use. And then if I go rinse that guy in my sink, I have seven. Pull this one out a little bit and the same thing. I think I'm gonna put two over here. I don't want it to be asymmetrical. This is not my usual look. I'm actually very um, uncomfortable. Hi, Sheila. June. You got your type on. You got to have your type on. It's a necessity. I think type one should be paying me at this point. So this guy, 
Maybe I'll put him up here, kind of flying downward. I need to hurry and get my tape. I should have had it ready. This will, these will dry in just a couple minutes, so I won't have to have them taped for that long. I'm gonna put two over here. Yeah, I didn't have this scheduled. This was, um, I just was out painting and I was making videos for the Redesign YouTube channel and thought I would just stay on and keep going. So, it's just kind of a impromptu live. Okay, this uh, glue will dry clear but I have too much right here, so I'm just gonna take my finger and wipe some of it away and put him back on. It was squeezing out a little bit, and even though it'll dry clear, I don't want a little ring of glue around my butterflies. You like it? It's real. I'm really uncomfortable with this look. This is not me at all. Nothing about this says brush by brand, but I, I actually am happier with it than I thought I would be. I just found another butterfly floating around. Jan, are you in Roseville? Yeah, that's super close. We go there all the time. Why are you uncomfortable? This is not a finish I would normally do. It's got, it's drippy. I used vinegar. You guys wanna see? I dropped the, <laughs> I dropped the butterfly in Fireball. Can you guys see up close? Can you guys see in this paint? See, it's got drips in it. This one's probably a little bit better because I've actually worked more over here. It's drippy and uneven. See the colors? I literally let them run off the drawer. I controlled the drips where I could. I've sanded through in spots, so the blue shows a little bit right here. It's everything I'm uncomfortable with. This is my boho commission piece. See on the top? These guys aren't permanent. This is the transfer that I used on the top, and then it's got butterflies on either side. I need to burnish this one. Oh, that's something I wanted to talk to you guys about. Could you move the camera? I can't see. Can you see there? So, but right now I'm sticking on these yellow butterfly guys. And then I'll come back and I'm gonna do some more steps after this, but this was my next step. Um, so these are painted in kernel mustard. I'm gonna add a little bit of kernel mustard into my paint finish. This paint finish does have a clear coat over it. So nothing I do to this clear coat could really be messed up. Let me put him on the very, very outer corner right here. So once I have a paint finish that I like, I will seal it in clear coat. I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about something I just experienced. Well, let me show you these drawer sides first. How cute are they? See the drawer sides are funky. Isn't that cute? So I've used two different transfers on here. Um, one's called In Flight and one is called Ah, what's the other one called? You like the yellow. One's called Passion Flower. So Passion Flower and In Flight. The yellow makes it for you. The yellow really pops. So I'm going to pull out. I'm going to do the yellow on this side too. We'll do that in just a minute. It's different for me. Totally different. I'm very, very, very uncomfortable right now. I like neat and clean and precise and even and... This is none of those things. What do you think? Should I put one like here in the center? Yeah, I like that. Um, okay, so um, I love hearing experiences that everyone has because it helps me learn too. And one of them, do you guys know Jan from um, Flip Furnishings of Kentucky? So Jan came out with an article recently about putting transfers over your clear coat to help reduce the halo. If you guys don't, go follow her on her page and go read that. So um, I just was playing around with that idea, putting a transfer over clear coat to help reduce the halo. Her findings were it kind of re it helped reduce the halo, which would make sense because logically I see it that, and I'm very logical, everything's gotta be logical. Um, I see it that it would help reduce the halo because then the paint under the transfer is sealed just like the paint on top of the transfer would be, right? So I tried it and my findings were 
Yes, it helps reduce the halo. Okay, this one didn't, he didn't cure very flat. We're going to discard that one. I just tried to glue it and it didn't, um, it didn't glue very well. So I'm going to put a different one in its place. Okay. Yeah, that guy's nice and flat. That one had a, that other one had a funky back. Yes, yes, Llewellyn Pan. So she just came out with an article and I thought it was amazing because I loved that she shared what her experiences were in a theory. So I just was testing that theory and here's what I found. Yes, it does help reduce the halo on your transfers, but they don't attach very well. Um, so I just removed the second only transfer I've ever had to remove from a piece. I removed from the side of this piece and I had to repaint the side. Um, the hardware, I think I'm going to go gold and I'll show you why. Cause I'm going to put some gilding waxes on these molds and the hardware goes on top. So let me get out some gilding boxes. This is going to be an ill-prepared live guys. Cause I'm just painting on my own page right now. So I'm going to get out my, I'm going to get out my eternal decor wax and I'm going to get out some purple wax and a hot pink. Hang on, I'm digging in my drawer. I've got a lot of gilding waxes. I guess I could show you guys where I dig them out from. Where's the purple? It's not like I use it enough to be lost. You guys want to see my drawer of gilding waxes? Here's what I'm digging in right now. Okay, so I've got Indian pink. These are the Art Alchemy waxes. I got Peacock, also from Art Alchemy. I'm going to get out Eternal, my gold, and I'm looking for purple. These Art Alchemy waxes come in all the bright colors. So here's a green. I might use green. I'll pull it out. Um, I try to keep them together. So my Dixie Bell is with my Dixie Bell and the Art Alchemies are together. Sometimes they wander. I have two of the greens. What is the purple? And then I don't understand why it's all messy when this is what I do is throw them around. Oh, here it is. It's right on the top. Holy, holy gilding wax drawer. Isn't it beautiful? I love digging in here. I've got all the redesign with Prima gilding waxes, all of the art alchemies. Most of them, they just came out with a new line that's um, matte, a matte finish instead of metallic. I've got fusion gilding waxes. I've got um, the artisan powders in here. My shop is fun. I got cool stuff. Oh, I have even some. These, oh, look how pretty this is. Right? This is um, icing paste. This is from Prima. You guys want to use some of this? This would be pretty on that piece. It's metallic and it's fabulous. The powders would be cool too. But I'm just going to stick with waxes, I think. Okay. And then it barely shuts. There we go. And I forgot my eternal. So when I go live, you guys usually have the advantage that I've dug through this drawer in advance. So I don't have to do it on camera with you guys. Yeah, you guys want to use the, the icing paste? That's cool. So I've got my... Um, Colonel Mustard on here. This is the Eternal Decor Wax, and I apply it with my finger. So the reason I'm live here tonight is because there's all kinds of finishes you guys see. And this is after my paint, after my clear coat, and then I sit here with an artist brush, and I do all the detail work. And that's the part you don't see. Susie, you can't see. Can you guys see okay? Ooh, I love that. So I'm gonna come in here. Plus I don't have Sean helping me with camera work. I'm coming in here and I'm putting in some of this. Uh, this is the Art Alchemy Wax in Indian Pink. These are from Prima. Um, let's see, Liz, we kind of picked these this color combination together. 
in that she told me kind of the look she wanted and sent me a few inspiration pieces. And then I got to kind of choose. And you know, last week I painted this live on camera and my color scheme even changed a little bit from there. Um, because I used some colors that I thought would work and they didn't work as well. And I find myself doing that a lot lately. And I don't want you guys to think that it's, you know, that I'm not being forward or, you know, I just, I end up changing things a lot. It happens a lot. It's not always right the first time I do something. And so I just change it. So I put some pink wax down at the bottom and now this is purple. This is um, electric violet. Party at Brandy's, woo! So I'm gonna put this up here at the top. Kind of mix it with the pink a little bit. Just makes these molds a little shimmery. But they can't look too perfect because obviously that wouldn't fit in with this look. Let's try some blue on here. Ooh, I like that. So this just kind of gives these molds some shimmer. I'm just putting the different colors on with my finger. I like that. And then I think I'm going to hit it with a little bit of gold on top of those colors. You'll bring wine. <laughs> Perfect. I don't drink. <laughs> Uh, I need to. So I'm going to put a little bit of gold on here too. And that's because I'm going to pull gold out in my hardware. And I kind of want it to tie in other places as well. So this guy up here, I love that I can put on gilding waxes. This is just rubbing it on with my finger. Oh, you guys can't even see that. Hey. And now all of a sudden, you will see all the detail that's in this mold. So I kind of have a new idea. Remember when I told you that things change a lot? Maybe using the gold up against the color and putting the colored waxes on just the butterflies. Cause I like the gold up against the color, but all of a sudden this mold, which has amazing detail, you can actually see it. So I kind of like that idea. So these waxes, the redesign with Prima waxes are permanent after 24 hours, but I can just take a t-shirt. So I'm going to change this and I'm going to put gold on here. I can just take a t-shirt and wipe it off. I think these butterflies should be sufficiently stuck. Because I really want the wax to show. So I'm going to come back with my eternal and put eternal or just put gold on these. And I don't do it totally evenly. Yeah, I feel like that shows up better than the color on the color. And then I don't put them on evenly. I will kind of fade it out in spots so it looks a little more natural. There, I like that better. You want a drawer of waxes. I'm telling you, they're an investment that's absolutely worth making. I've said this in videos before and in my classes that I teach that you should reinvest in your business every time you make a sale. How's that? With gold hardware, I think that'll be pretty. The butterflies I cast in resin using the using a redesign with Prima mold. It's called Regal Findings. I had it out and I think I put it away. It's, uh, but it has little butterflies and bees and things like that. And so I cast them out of resin. 
painted them in kernel mustard and I glued just glued them on tonight. And I like that um, I painted them beforehand so I can make them a different color than the body color on my piece. Okay, now let's test my theory with putting colored wax on the butterflies instead. We're testing theories tonight. I'm just going to take a little bit. This does the same thing to the butterflies. Now I can start seeing the details in his wings. And I'm going to come from the edges and pull my finger in. I can't play with them too much because they're the, that glue is still soft. I just glued these guys tonight. And then I'll pull you guys in and show you. This is the blue gilding wax. But I feel like you can see it better up against the yellow than you could up against the colors. Okay. Oh, you couldn't even see me doing that, huh? So that's the blue gilding wax on the yellow. Got a little spot that's too strong right there. It wipes them off. There. That's a little more even. I like that. Maybe I'll put a little bit of purple on him too. use a brush with these too. That might be pretty. I'm just going to take an artist brush. Oh, what, what I, where I was going is, um, is reinvest into your business with every sale. Go buy yourself a new paint color, a new tool, a new something. Take at least 10% of your profit It can be really easy to just take that and absorb it into your household budget, but this is a business for me. And so I have to keep my supplies fresh and updated. I like that. That's really pretty. I just kind of painted him with an, with the waxes with um, an artist brush. And now he matches. Just the yellow pops through a little bit. This guy I'm gonna do, let's do him down here in purple. I liked it better with the um, artist brush. So I'm just testing stuff out. How, how does that look? What works better? Yeah, the artist brush really softens it. I'm painting the details with waxes. See the purple on top? You need to make more <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't we all? Um, I'm going to come up here and pull this drawer out, and I'm going to put some um, black wax on here. So these are all the finishing touches. I've got out paint. I've got out um, waxes, gilding waxes. I'm going to put a little bit of yellow. So all I'm doing with the yellow is I have a spatula, little kitchen spatula, and I'm tipping it in the lid of my kernel mustard just to, to get a little bit on there. And I'm pulling it down from the top and it finds the texture in my paint. I want it to be kind of uneven. You know, I can make it stronger in areas. And then I've got a spray bottle with vinegar in it and I don't want it to drip, but it just makes the paint kind of run together a little bit. So I'm going to fill in this. So these two connect. What did you do with that band between the top drawer? Everything on here, I let the paint run into itself. So I put on, ah, uh, Plum Crazy, Amethyst, and Aubergine, 
and then I sprayed it with um, vinegar, 50-50 vinegar and water, and I let them run into each other. And I did that with it flipped upside down. <laughs> this piece comes off. The top of this comes off. This is a separate piece right here. See? So I was able to turn it whatever I, which way I wanted to let the paint run. I'm using my camera like a mirror so I can see what it looks like. Not just from my perspective. Use my fingers and wipe it back some if I don't like it. I kind of like that. So I'm going to come do the center door. I just needed this to hold these guys up for a minute, but I feel like they're stuck enough now. So I need to open this drawer because I don't want to get it on the um, frame of my drawer. This also has a mirror that's painted to match and the mirror starts at purple on the bottom and goes up to the blue on the top. I don't have the full mirror though. I only have the frame of it. Um, she kept the glass and I'm glad she did. I don't need the glass for anything, but she had just had the glass replaced. And so she kept that, which makes my life a little bit easier. Do you like it, Pam? It's really different for me. It's really different for me. This order made me a little bit nervous and I tried to keep a straight face talking to the customer so she didn't know that she had, um, that I was shaking in my boots a little bit. And she saw me doing it live and said she likes it. So, so far so good. Um, I'm actually really, really happy with it. Uh, probably more. And then I'm going to use my, this is 50-50 vinegar and water. I have it in a different color spray bottle, so I know it's my vinegar mix. And it just, vinegar just makes the paint run differently. It makes it want to separate into like spider veins. Um, so that's all I'm doing is I'm just softening it by spraying it. I don't want it to full on drip down the front of my piece. I just want it to soften the edges a little bit. In fact, if it starts dripping, I'm gonna wipe it off. I don't, want, I don't want that. It helps it look not so deliberate, I guess. I can't decide if I should go all the way across that drawer or not. I kind of want to. I don't know if that'll be too much. But you know what? Remember when I told you that I clear coated my paint to preserve my paint finish? So whatever I do, if I don't like it, it's on top of sealed paint. So I can't, I'm not going to ruin it. Once I have a paint finish that I like, I seal it with clear coat. And that preserves my paint finish. So if I don't like my waxes, I just did a transfer. It did not work well. Um, I can, I kind of like that. Yeah, I kind of like it all the way across. But because I've sealed my paint, it lets me play a little more freely. So once you have a paint finish that you like, seal your paint finish. So for example, I'm feeling like I miss my butterflies being just plain yellow over here. And take my kernel mustard and I'm just going to paint over and make them solid kernel mustard again. Just with a little artist brush. I have 200 artist brushes out right now. So I'm just painting over. I put gilding waxes on here. I don't like it. I'm looking at it again. I'll probably take two coats to cover the gilding waxes back up. 
I'm just going to stick with the gold. Otherwise it gets too busy. I don't like busy. And then I can go back over there and I'll show you. I put some black wax on here. So these guys are pretty well stuck, right? Okay, so applying wax. I just take a brush like this. This already has clear coat over it. And this is my best dang wax in black. And I just dip a little, my brush in there, get a little bit on it. It doesn't take a lot. And I want to darken. I'm going to use it like a glaze. I don't like glaze. I very rarely glaze. I don't like doing it. I don't like glaze it as a product. It just doesn't suit me. But I will use black wax more often than glaze. And I'm digging it into all these crevices on my molds. I already did this on that side. And then I'm going to wipe it out. A little gold wax on that. That might work better. And I'm going to wipe it back. And it just sticks in the low spots on my mold. Okay, so I have had a ton of questions lately about adding dark waxes as an accent. These wipe off fairly easily. Not the, so much the what's stuck in the crevice. You can see how it just gave it some more definition from this one over here to this one. Um, so what I do, I brushed on the coat of clear coat that I have on this was brushed on. My final clear coat will be sprayed. So if I were to brush another clear coat on top of this dark wax, I could pull some of this dark wax off. It's a water-based wax. The clear coat is water-based. Um, if you're going to brush on a clear coat over this, you either have to wait for your um, wax to set up enough that you can brush, brush it, which means pulling at it, and not pull the wax off. Um, that is usually a few days of your wax setting up. The other option is you brush really, really, really softly around your decorative boxes if you don't want to wait that long, or you spray your clear coat over top. I spray my clear coat over top. I don't have to worry about pulling waxes off. And then I'm going to come in here and I'm going to leave a little bit of wax just for shading in this crevice and then down here. Ooh, that looks pretty. That's black wax. Ooh, I like that. That might be the best option. That's black wax over the top of the yellow butterflies. Just kind of dry brushed on. I can see their details better. I like that. And then, okay, the decor waxes from Redesign are oil-based waxes, but I'm using them in such a small quantity that I will still spray clear coat over the top of this. And I don't worry about my clear coat not attaching because it's literally just put on to the very edges of a mold. This can go over the top of your final coat too. If you're using it in larger quantities, say for stripes or something, you may want to do that because it is an oil-based wax. And so it can inhibit your water-based clear coat from attaching. But I'm just using it on the edges of a mold. So I will still spray a clear coat over top of this. What sprayer do you use? Susie, I just literally this week got in the mail an Apollo sprayer. An Apollo sprayer. It is the most beautiful piece of equipment I can say that I own. It is absolutely an incredible piece. I, I mean, I'm just awestruck by it. And so I've been learning to use my Apollo sprayer. Um, Pam Haskins from 44 Marketplace. If you guys don't follow her already, go give her a follow. And she uses her Apollo spray all the time. Um, she has a link if you want to look at them and try one out. Um, but that's what I've been using is Apollo. And I love it. it it's, man, it's a game changer. So now I'm going to tip my same spatula in my lid for my kernel mustard. This paint is even getting a little bit sticky, and that's okay because it, um, I'm 
because then I can place it, you know, really deliberately. I'm going to pull that one down a little bit more. Australia, hi Ursula. We're just painting at night. I'm just finishing up this piece. There, I love that. I'm going to flip my spatula the other way because this is a tiny space and just put some little bits of it above my mold too. And then soften it with my spray. It just makes the paint kind of run together in place. It's not enough to pull it down the front of my drawer, but just enough that it runs to, you know, kind of runs together. So this is my black wax. I'm going to make it go in the crevices of this mold. I'm going to wipe it off. You know, so if you're using black wax like this, just getting it into crevices, I could brush a clear coat over that and it's not going to pull it out. It's deep in those crevices. But if you're using it um, all over, brushing a clear coat over top is going to be is going to be hard. Is the Dixie Belle Gold Gilding Wax as stunning as the Redesign Wax? They are very, 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 very different products. Um, the Redesign Wax is much softer. So let's do something. I'm gonna go grab. I'm gonna go grab a Dixie Belle Gilding Wax and let's use the Dixie Belle Gilding Wax. I'm gonna grab the black one. Hang on, I'm back at my drawer of waxes. Looking for Dixie Bell. Found it. Okay. The Dixie Bell gilding waxes are much harder. They're more of a cake, like a patty, than a cream. These are very creamy. Um, they go on really easily. I love these. These are more, the Dixie Belle Gilding Waxes, um, so the gold would be more just for shimmer. You don't get as much. It's so quiet. And Sean is not here. He's in the house. I think he's feeding my kids. He's so good, you guys. I can come out here and disappear and paint. And um, he doesn't question me at all. He doesn't come out and... So I'm going to use, I'm using an artist brush and my black gilding wax. The black I love because it's very concentrated. So I'm writing it in this um, molding here to emphasize that. Oops. Oh, I hear him out. He's outside in our workshop. Which reminds me, I needed to get some furniture out and he just closed the door. So I think the Dixie Bell waxes are firmer. They're more for shimmer versus like I would paint carvings and stuff with this. So this is much softer. When I put my finger in, I get a whole bunch more out than I do with the Dixie Bell waxes. So you're going to get more of a translucent shimmer with the Dixie Bell waxes versus um, these are more opaque. So I'm using my finger and putting on some gilding wax on here. And then my hardware will be gold and will sit in the center of that carving. So then I'm going to take my brush that I just put my black gilding wax on. Hi, Lynn. And I'm going to put some black gilding wax on the butterfly. I liked the black. It was just enough to help see his details. Um, without actually painting the butterfly. I don't want them to look painted. I want them to be very yellow. All right, so I like that. I like this drawer needs a little bit of the yellow. Coming back with my spatula. So this is where I just will go across a piece and I do finishing touches on everything. It's, that's gilding waxes, that's black wax, that's, 
You use the silver and it was kind of translucent. Yes, it's it's more for just a shimmer. Just, just you know, translucent um, over the top of something, but you're not going to get opaque coverage like you do with the um, redesign waxes. If, oh, hang on, I missed that. If so, if you don't eat, you don't have the redesign um yeah you could be disappointed because it's a very 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 different product it's um like i said it's just for it's just for more of shimmer than actually turning something into an opaque gold so not my style so not my style but i do like it i'm i'm really happy with it Um, I was talking with Kristana the other day and she, she said she was making a joke that like all is wrong in the world when she's doing, cause she just did a neutral piece and I'm doing boho. All is wrong in the world. She's right. Not my style. Maybe it is my style and I just didn't know it. Oh, another thing. Okay. This piece, you guys look down at the floor. This piece originally had wheels. When the customer brought it to me, the wheels were missing. So I took, I have a whole bunch of extra wheels and I put wheels on this. Um, and that way when I'm rolling it around, I'm not, I'm not just sliding the piece on the floor, but if you get old pieces that um, used to have wheels, these are broken wheels. I wouldn't put them on anything. But they work perfect for me to um, wheel this piece around and then I'll take them back off when I'm done and give her her piece back. Um, we talked about wheels and possibly adding them. She wasn't sure, so she may add them later. But I just wanted to suggest that. If they're not even a match set, I've got three that match and one that's different. Throw some wheels in the holes that are under the legs and then my piece is on wheels. A lot of these pieces had wheels to begin with and they're just missing. That was the case for this one. So now I can wheel it around. It's wheeling on, on these janky old wheels that I took off of some random piece somewhere along the way. Um, and I'm not going to ruin this customer's piece. But I'm going to come down here and work the legs with yet another artist brush. So I'm going to use, and I'm going to use Plum Crazy. And I'm going to use it to emphasize the rings on here. Hey, Gary. My butterflies are molds. So I'm taking this little tiny artist brush and I'm running it in the crevice of these legs right here. There are so many steps that go into a piece. It's not ever just the paint. I do you do the prep and then you do the paint. Uh, I hope you guys can see Gary. I get to see you in like a week. Wait, you guys aren't coming, huh, Gary? Gary. Remind me again, are you and Molly coming to the retailers conference? I will be in Florida on February 27th, teaching at the Dixieville Paint Retailers Conference. So I'm getting it into these, this crevice and then I'm gonna just wet a rag. Cause I want it to be really clean in that crevice. So it's just a little painted stripe around. I'll do this next one. Kind of brings out those details, huh? And I work my way around a piece. After I've got the paint on, I'll do my transfer. Those are the major things. And then I'll work around it with gilding waxes and black wax. And I use that to emphasize things and bring dimension to it. And um, these are all the finishing touches you don't see. I'm 
And this stuff takes, you know, I always say, no, yeah, that's what I thought she was getting her surgery. Man, kind of bummed. Um, I hope she does. I hope she has a quick recovery from that. I'll be thinking about you guys for sure. Keep us posted on how she does, okay, Gary? All right. And then on the other side, I painted this ring down here. Is that you, Sean? Yeah. You on camera? Yeah, but I'm just on my own page. Joining us now, we have. I won't show you because you're wearing a miner's light on your yeah. head for some reason. I was working on the camper. <laughs> we just sold one of our campers. More boho. Bohe. Bohe. More bohe. Do I need yellow over here or would that be weird? No. I'm going to leave it. Less is more, Brandy. Less is more. Do I have a mark here? <laughs> okay, now I'm going to come to the side. And on the side, I want to darken my crevices right here. So I'm going to take some of my black wax, tiny artist brush. I'm going to run it down the crevice. Crevasse. And then I'm going to use a larger brush. work that out a little bit that is a subtle difference that I do with most all of my crevices and it just darkens them and makes them look like they are shaded you're gonna need me to do more boho oh, I don't know if I can I might be boho to the max and then I'm going to put a little bit of black wax down here. This is just shading with waxes. It is like putting on eyeliner and eyeshadow. Oh, no, I understand. That's why you have no clue what I'm doing, huh? <laughs> Sean's out here. Now I totally get it. Gary's watching. He's the only one who doesn't understand that reference. <laughs> you took off your miner's light, I would put you on camera, but I can't show you. I can't show you like that. I would be ashamed. I just, I just can't justify it. Same thing. Little bit of eyeliner. Little bit of eyeshadow. Do you mess it up like a walk of shame? Or yeah. My piece is going to do the walk of shame tomorrow. <laughs> it's going to do the roll of shame because I put wheels on it. <laughs> All right, how am I across the front? I'm gonna go fix that drawer. I didn't do the black wax on the top. You guys wanna see, Sean? No. <laughs> Hello, that's not the shot they want. <laughs> Maybe it is, or is it? Well, hello, ladies. <laughs> um, this is his permanent wardrobe too, you guys. That Carhartt jacket, I think, oh, and a Carhartt vest. Carhartt jacket yeah. on top of a Carhartt vest. It's cold. Yeah, <laughs> he wears it 24-7. We have a, um, the yellow are butterflies. I cast these with resin. These are molds that I cast to back my hardware. I drilled out the center. Okay, so I'm gonna go across the front. Oh, you know what? I, this has some fluting detail here. I'm gonna darken that. Eyeliner. Just a little bit of, this is the black gilding wax in the fluting detail. Um, on top of this, I will also come back after this is sprayed. This is probably the last step that I do after this is sprayed. Um, and I will pull out the drawers and polish those with Big Mama's Butter inside. I do that last because the drawers are going to continue to get Dirty as I'm working on a farmer, Sean. Gary just called you a farmer. Yeah. Not even close. I think he's more like farmer-esque than I am. He's 
Gary, do you have a farm? Small town guy. I don't think Gary has a farm either. Okay. I feel like I'm good here. I like this. I like this side. So. Come here. And I didn't, um, I don't have black wax around these or in this crevice here. So I'm going to do my crevasse. This artist brush and the Dixie Bell black gilding wax. Um, on molds is gold gilding wax. Yes. So these have gold gilding wax on the very top of them. That's gold gilding wax. And then I'll have gold hardware. So the gold will tie in with that. And then the um, kernel mustard on my butterflies ties in with a little bit of kernel mustard I've got at the top of the drawers. Did you do it with the candlestick? Yes, kernel mustard did it in the library with the candlestick. Okay, good. Just checking. That's what I heard. In I'm years. asking for a friend. <laughs> You're inside playing Clue with the kids? <laughs> I gotta go. <laughs> I got it! <laughs> I'll be right back. <laughs> this is all stuff that you probably don't notice in a finish, but I spend hours doing this, and I think it's, you know, it's probably good and bad that you don't notice that. that, that this is all part of the finish. But hours goes into doing decorative waxes and I like that little bit of um, black gilding wax on the butterflies just enough to hit the high points in their wings. <laughs> and now and now she's, you have to do it in like that, in that whispering voice though, where it sounds like I'm doing something really intense. That's not cool. That's like creeperish. <laughs> and now. <laughs> I'm giving Christella a run for her money. Am I really? Did you put black wax over trim molds? Yes. I'm going to do that right now. So I've got a brush, vesting wax and black. Digging it all into here. This piece is already sealed with clear coat. Keep saying that. Once I have a paint finish I like, I seal it with clear coat. And then whatever I do to the piece, I know that my paint is protected. So if I don't like it, I can wipe it back off again. It gives me room to play. And then I'm going to take this black wax back off. A glaze would work for this too, but I don't like glaze. Me and glaze are not friendly. A little bit of black wax on those. I like that. My eternal decor wax. What is the top just above the middle drawer? This is a vanity. It has a mirror and the mirror um, sits up here. So this will be the base of the mirror and then the mirror goes up above it. I don't um, yeah, you want to set it up there? I don't have the full mirror, you guys. She took the glass out, so, um. I'd pretend to be the reflection, but she looks hideous. <laughs> um, my customer had just had the glass replaced, and so she just brought me the frame. So that's how it'll sit. I don't know. Should I change this right here? Maybe I should, that should be dark going into light. Maybe it should just all be aubergine. Hmm. Now I'm rethinking that. that I might just make this all aubergine. Because I don't like how it meets up with the mirror. Mm -hmm. No, because that actually helped me to see what I want to do with it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Alright, I'm gonna go see how much work of the water. Okay. The concrete block. I'll miss you. Mm-hmm. Alright. Postcard. You like it. I don't know. I feel like that that line right there is weird. Like I need to change that. I will probably change that before you see it again. But anyway, you can see this is the mirror. All the way up to the top. 
and I will probably change where they meet up so that they where they meet up is more friendly. I will uh, mirror mirror all wall. Who is the best? Best dress of them all is my garage door. I don't have the glass. She took the glass out because she had just had it replaced. Which makes it really nice for me because then I don't have to worry about having a glass mirror hanging out. Um, I want a little bit more yellow on this drawer here. I'm using a spatula for this because it has flex in it. So as I'm going over the surface, it drags kind of. Um, I think once you add the mirror, we'll tie in more. Yeah, I don't know. I just don't like where these meet up right here. I'm going to fix it. Yeah, I'll just, I'll still use both colors. I'll just change how they meet up. I'd rather figure that out now than like when I'm going to stage it. I know what else I was going to do. I'm going to add to the sides a little bit of um, stenciling in the kernel mustard. Do you guys want to stencil? Um, I'm going to add kind of a bohemian stencil on the side. So, um, a touch of blue where they meet. Yeah, could use some blue, huh? So the, the thing I'm thinking about is the back of this is purple back here. So that's why it's darker. But I think I need to make it just in the plums and purplies because all the blue is towards the front and see it has butterflies even on the top and then this piece right here this is you can take this off like if she just wanted to use it with the mirror that could be done too very 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 different for me Just pulling down a little bit of the yellow. I like that better. Where am I? So my legs look good. I need to finish this drawer up here and then add this yellow stenciling to the side. I don't know. And then my mirror. Put a little bit of the yellow onto the mirror as well. You're going to change one to boho. I'm super uncomfortable with boho. This was way out of my wheelhouse. This customer may own the one and only boho brush by Brandy piece. That's how uncomfortable with boho I am. But I really, really like that it was a challenge, that it was something different, because I get bored easily. Um, so I really like, I'm going to put away some of the things that I'm not using, which is the colored gilding waxes I ended up not using. The icing paste, the purple. But I would get bored very easily just doing the same thing over and over. You know, it's like you like to go on adventure and then you like to come home. So this is my adventure. I just did this blue blended piece. That was a little bit of my home. That's my comfort zone. Bring the purples up onto the mirror, maybe. I think she's going to love it. That's how you're feeling with your wave. Yeah, Susan, that's a, that's a, that's a tough job. Susan is um, painting right now, you guys, the redesign with Prima transfer. 
Let's see, I like that drawer. I need to do the black gilding marks over here. The redesign with Prima Transfer with the wave on it, and she's gonna paint it in. Although, Susan, you're super talented. I saw the clouds that you did on that last piece and they looked beautiful, so. And she's gonna paint her own clouds and, um, and blend that wave transfer into her piece. And that is a challenge. And then up here, artist brush on my black gilding wax. And I'm gonna go in this crevice here. So I do need to do the mirror, but I won't do that on camera tonight. I may do just the stenciling, but I'm pretty close to being done on this piece. And then um, I have a jewelry box that I'm working on and then I'm going to give, I'll give both of them to Sean. So Sean does a lot of my spraying for me, not because I'm not capable of spraying, but it's a way that he can help me. He's not, he can't come out here and put a, you know, put a second coat on something, but I can ask him, Hey, can you go spray for me? And it takes, you know, spring is a very quick process. So it's a way that he, something that he's comfortable with. It's not that I can't spray myself or that I'm uncomfortable spraying, but it is something that he can help me with that helps me get more pieces done. Yeah, the three color process is way out of your comfort zone. But see, then you go and you do something out of your comfort zone and then go home for a minute. You know, whatever your style is, Gary. You can go back to your style. I'm going to put my paint away. I'll deal with that paint there another time. Although I have brushes out now, I should probably just do it now. Yeah, Sean re really is. He really, really, really supports me. I think he's just still shocked that this... Uh, ever became anything. I say that jokingly because he's totally supportive, but I think he's still like, really? Really? Okay. I got a little bit of gilding wax on this lip right here, so I'm just cleaning that up. Um, these butterflies still need to dry a little bit, and then I'll put a little bit of black wax on them. I'm gonna add a little bit of yellow, so back with my spatula. And I'm just putting some kernel mustard in here. And that's probably it. And my hardware. <laughs> you missed a spot. It's not, it's supposed to have spots missing. It's none of this is evenly blended. If I bring you in here, can you guys see that um, the color underneath is peeking through? There's blue peeking through. This is a little bit drippy. Um, they drip, the colors are dripping into each other. It's very, 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 very uneven. I like the kernel mustard. All right, I'm going to do some stenciling and I can call it a night on this one. And I'll do the mirror later. So I have to take this mirror down. Well, the mirror frame. And I'm going to get my stencil. Hang on. Hang on. I know which one I want to use. I just got to find it. Oh my gosh, it looks pretty. So that always helps me too. If I step away from the piece and then walk back towards it, it gives you kind of new perspective. Um, this is the side I had to repaint. I'm going to put clear coat on this, I think, before I stencil. Let's do this side. That side I had to repaint because I was putting a transfer on on top of the clear coat. Transfers do not adhere when put over a clear coat. 
that's what I learned tonight. Put them on your raw paint, guys. I've seen it. There, there was a theory that came out. I was testing it. They don't attach. It had, it had no adherence. I burnished it and rubbed that transfer right off with almost zero effort. I was able to take it off with almost zero effort. I would rather have my transfer adhere and um, deal with the halo another way. And then I'm looking for my stencil brushes. Well, this guy will have to work. Where's my redesign stencil brushes? You know what the problem is? Is they're short and they get lost in my... Oh, here's one. This is the one I was looking for. I love these guys. So I'm going to take my Colonel Mustard. I'm going to dip it in. Oh, it's not Colonel Mustard. This is Golden Years uh, from the um, Flea Market Decor Collection. It's just a shade off of Colonel Mustard. So I'm going to call it still Colonel Mustard because these are no longer available. It's Colonel Mustard. Very little paint. It's going to be kind of a faded stencil. Oh, open puddles of paint on the floor make me nervous too. I've knocked over my fair share. All right, let me find the back of my stencil. So this is a stencil by Redesign with Prima. And I want to use just this part right here. This kind of Moroccan scrolly looking part. And I want it to kind of fade out. Let me refill my brush. So I start with more paint kind of in the center. And then as my brush starts your brush is going to start having less and less paint. And so as it has less paint on it is when I'll start bringing it out to the edge and fading my stencil out to where it disappears. That was just a transfer tube, not paint. So same thing. I just refilled my brush. I dab I'm dabbing it off on a cloth. Refilling my brush, dabbing it off on my cloth. I'm not going to go all the way across. In fact, after this, fill with my brush, I'm going to start fading it out over here. see what that looks like that's pretty huh just kind of a faded stencil do I want more I'm kind of deciding if I want more less is more huh tell me less is more guys Otherwise, I'm debating doing some up top here. I'm just going to do a very faded fill of the, this top. Like that. I like that. Give us a close up. I like that. I could even sand um, some of this off a little bit after it dries because I really, really, really like the faded portion like right here. That's really pretty. And over here. So I might sand a little bit of this off as it dries. You know what? I feel confident enough in that to go ahead and do it on my side that does not have clear coat on it. Know that I'm not gonna mess it up. Go back 
back over to that side. Get my stencil brush. And my rag. You guys can come too. And I'm gonna do the same thing over here. I'll use the same part of my stencil, so I'm gonna block the part of it. All right, I'm gonna dip my paint. Just tipping my brush a little bit. Dab it off on a cloth. I'm going to go a little bit further on this side just so it's not the same as the other side. So they kind of fade out in a different place. I like that. What is the name of the stencil? Oh my gosh, that's a good question. I don't know. Ah, let me look up and I'll answer you after this. Um, I changed the piece behind me. I did. So afterwards I showed it to the customer, this piece right here. I showed it to the customer and she was leaning towards the gray blues. And so we changed it from antebellum blue in that range to stormy seas savannah mist sawmill gravy and midnight sky i love that perfect so i think i'm going to get off i might do a little bit more of the stencil on the top and then i'm going to um, um i'm going to do the mirror and change how the mirror meets up and then when you guys see this piece again it will be with hardware on and finished so, but these are the finishing touches. These are the things you don't see that come after the paint and take a lot of time. Um, but it's going through inch by inch on my piece and adding waxes and gilding waxes and a little more paint and touching up spots and accenting areas and things like that that you don't see. So that looks good, huh? I love this stencil in here. Perfect. How do you feel about the halo? Okay, I touched on this. Um, people are playing around with how to reduce the halo. I just made a video on it tonight for Prima. It will be out in the next couple days. They're gonna edit it for me and then get it out. I like the antebellum in the, in the navy as well. Just in the color she's redoing her house in, they're more of the gray blue. So we just made that change. Same concept. You just saw the drawer side. Hang on, I'm gonna pull back out again so you can see. See the drawer sides? Everything on this piece is funky. Um, I, and the, these are painted solid. I um, just did a video on reducing the halo and the better ways to reduce the halo, do not put a transfer on top of clear coat. If you need to, you can. If you put your clear coat on and you wanna add a transfer, you can. I just don't want that to become the mainstream way of putting a transfer on because I tried it tonight and that transfer came off with just rubbing, just my fingers rubbing. Um, and usually they don't do that. So I feel like it might help reduce the halo, but your transfer is not attached as well. So um, 
Ways to reduce the halo around a transfer. Burnish it after you put it on. Rub all the little air bubbles out from between your piece and that transfer. That's one way. Um, the other way is to trim the edges on your transfer. And this is what you're gonna see in the video. Trim the edges on your transfer before you put them on, before you seam them together so that the clear halo is gone and they're not overlapping but they meet up side by side perfectly. Instead of this, they just meet up side by side. You'll see that. I have a video coming on ways to reduce the halo. Joan replay, cause I'm getting off right now guys. Um, but thanks, I just came on to paint and answer questions and talk and um, I'm gonna finish this piece up. Next time you see it, it will be all done. Totally out of my wheelhouse, but I hope my customer loves it if she's watching tonight. What do you think? Distress Lace, that's it. That's the stencil name. Thank you so much. Yes, Lynn, that was your stencil name. Distress Lace. I love it. It's very Moroccan feeling, so it goes perfectly with that, um, the mold, the Moroccan emblem, and, um, oh gosh, what's the other one? There's two molds that are very Moroccan feeling. So anyway, I'll let you guys go. Have a good night. Thanks for hanging out with me. I'll talk to you later.